Welcome once again. In this session, we're going to be reading 1 John chapter 2, and this is going to be good. I like the letters of John more than the letters of Paul, I have to admit. There's just so much meat in it. It's just so good. Let's get right into this. Verse 1, John said, My little children, I write these things to you so that you may not sin. Wow. How many pastors do you know of that the first thing they say on Sunday morning is, this service is here that you may not sin? And also consider the fact that just a few verses before, in John chapter 1, verse 8, people like to use that verse to justify their sin. Say, well, John said that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. No, 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 no. What John is talking about is sin in your past. Because he says here, I'm writing you these things. I'm writing to you that you may not sin, that you may cut that off, that you may stop sinning. John went on to say, if anyone sins... We have a counselor with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Here it says in the notes that the term atoning sacrifice also means an appeasing or propitiating. Again, verse 2, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins or the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. This is how we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments... Remember, John here was a Jew, and he's talking about keeping the mitzvot. If we keep the mitzvot, if we keep the commandments, keep in mind, at this time, there was no New Testament. The scriptures that they used in their church services was the Tanakh, was the so-called Old Testament, the Septuagint. So when John said the commandments, everybody knew what he meant, and he wasn't talking about New Testament scripture. Verse 4. One who says, I know him, and doesn't keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth isn't in him. But God's love has most certainly been perfected in whomever keeps his word. Once again, let's look at this. But God's love has most certainly been perfected in whoever keeps his word. It doesn't say in everybody. It says in whoever keeps his word. This is how we know that we are in him. There's a lot of people who say that, you know, there's neither male nor female in Christ, that there's neither slave nor master in Christ. There's a lot of people who claim that term in Christ, but they don't know what it means. John said here, this is how we know that we are in him, in Christ. He who says he remains in him ought himself also to walk just like he walked. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Obey the Torah. Obey the mitzvot. Obey the commandments. Verse 7. Brothers, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment. Notice, old commandment, which you have had from the beginning. This is before the New Testament was considered to be scripture. This is before a lot of the New Testament even was written. John goes on to say here in verse 7. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, I write a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light already shines. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in the darkness even until now. He who loves his brother remains in the light and there is no occasion for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness, and doesn't know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, little children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God remains in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Don't love the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the Father's love isn't in him. There are conditions to have the Father's love in you. Number one, you have to keep his commandments. Number two, you must not love the world. It says very explicitly here, if you love the world, the Father's love is not in you. 
But someone might say, what is the world? What do you mean by the world? Verse 16, for all that is in the world, here we go. Here's the definition. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Three things that are classified as the world. The trinity of sin. And don't forget in Genesis chapter 3, when the serpent tempted Eve to sin, he tempted Eve with those very same things. The trinity of sin, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It says that Eve saw that the fruit was good for food. That's the lust of the flesh. And it was pleasing to the eyes. That's the lust of the eyes. And then it was desirable to make one wise, according to the word. That is the pride of life. What God did on the cross was he took what happened in the garden and he inverted it. The fruit, that is Jesus, was put back up on the tree, which is the cross. Verse 17, the world is passing away with its lusts, but he who does God's will remains forever. Verse 18, Little children, these are the end times. And as you heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have risen. By this we know that it is the final hour. They went out from us, but they didn't belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have continued with us. But they left, that they might be revealed that none of them belong to us. You have an anointing from the Holy One, and you have all knowledge." And the note says here, or know what is true, or know all things. Verse 21, I have not written to you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, that is, that Yeshua is the Messiah? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son doesn't have the Father. He who confesses the Son has the Father also. Therefore, as for you, let that remain in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you heard from the beginning remains in you, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. This is the promise which he promised us, the eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who would lead you astray. As for you, the anointing which you receive from him remains in you. And you don't need for anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is no lie, and even as it taught you, you will remain in him. Now, little children, remain in him, that when he appears, we may have boldness and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. It is so important to practice righteousness. The righteousness of Christ is not some invisible cloak like the emperor's new clothes. It's not some magical thing that just that no one sees. If you really have the righteousness of Christ, you will shine like the sun. Everybody will see it. And many times you won't even have to preach a word. They will see that you are way different than the world. Until next time, seek him while he may be found. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.